just got a trip to Ireland, Budapest, and Paris for 60,000 miles and $100. If you're not travel hacking, you need to start hacking those miles. You've got mail. What is up, my friend? This is Jason, stoked today because it is mail time. I'm back in Charlotte, North Carolina. Been on the road for like four months. You might be saying to yourself, wait a second, Jason, you don't have a home. You're practically homeless. How do you get your mail? Exactly what we're here to talk about today. Let's do this. All right, so yeah. Technically, I'm kind of homeless. I sold my house four months ago, started traveling in the US. I drove from the East Coast to the West Coast and then down South and then up North and then back to the East Coast. And now I'm sitting here back in Charlotte, North Carolina. But before I could do all of those things, I had to kind of deal with some logistics. Mail's not gonna stop coming. There's gonna be important documents that I'm gonna need to get along the way whenever I'm either on the road in the US or when I'm traveling overseas. I'm getting ready to head to the UK and Ireland, Budapest, uh, in a few weeks, and we're gonna be gone for about 10 weeks. So what am I gonna do about mail when I get there? So I figured out the vir that a virtual mailbox was the way to go. All right, so exactly what is a virtual mailbox? Imagine a virtual mailbox as kind of like a PO box, but with superpowers. A virtual mailbox allows you to have a service receive all of your mail, scan the front of that mail, scan potentially the insides of that mail so that you now have it on a virtual mailbox that you can get via your phone, via your computer, or any other device. And then you can decide whether you want to dig deeper into those pieces of mail. Maybe you need more scans. Maybe you need them to fax something for you, send a check out for you, or, or even forward that mail to you. So let's dig into the nitty gritty, the nuts and bolts, and what a virtual mailbox does. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not, but at least you'll know a little bit more about going digital nomad or traveling full time and how you can possibly get your mail whenever you're doing that. So first things first, when you're getting a virtual mailbox, you have to pick an address. So yeah, you, you're still, you still have an address, it's just not a physical address that you probably live at anymore. So virtual mailbox services have different locations, usually across the US, in different states. I chose one near Charlotte, North Carolina, because that made sense to me. If I am gonna be in the region regularly and I might need my virtual mailbox to send me some of my actual physical packages that they have received, the shorter, the better, the cheaper, and you know, for me, having something close to Charlotte, North Carolina, while I figure out the next logistics of, of my life, my nomad life, um, that made sense. So if your region is gonna be out west or if your region is gonna be in the northeast, maybe you wanna go ahead and get a virtual mailbox in, in those areas. So now that you've chosen the location of where your virtual mailbox lives, you change all the addresses for anything that might be coming to you. Little side note, I have an article about getting rid of your physical junk mail. A couple years ago, I followed three or four steps that I dug up on the interwebs and I reduced my junk mail by like 80%. Uh, if you got a junk mail problem, follow the link below and fix that. Save, save the environment, save the tree. All right, back to it. So now you have your address, you've changed the address on all the services that are sending you mail so that now it's going to be virtual mailbox service. And once your virtual mailbox starts getting your letters, they're gonna scan in the front of each one of those envelopes and they're gonna notify you and say, hey, you've got mail. So you jump into your virtual dashboard, you start to look at the front of these letters and you say, oh, well, I don't need this one, shred it. I wanna know what's inside this one, so open it and scan it. I'm not sure what to do with this piece of mail, just hold it. Most services allow you to hold your mail for about 90 days, and then if you haven't decided what to do with it by then, they'll be like, hey, what do you wanna do with this? You can return to sender, or you could have your mail forwarded. Uh, what I've done since I've been on the road is I'll kind of save up four or five letters that I know I need. For instance, I needed my AAA card because I was overland traveling, got my new AAA card in the mail and it went to my virtual mailbox. I said, hold that to the side. Got a new credit card, hold that to the side. Uh, insurance paperwork, hold that to the side. Once I got five or six letters that I needed, I waited until I was gonna be in one location for about a week and just before I got to that location, I told my virtual mailbox service, hey, package these things up and send them to me at this particular address. Got to my home base for the week, envelope just like this showed up and all my contents were inside. That usually only costs me about two to four dollars for them to package everything up, throw it in an envelope, and send it to me via regular USPS. I could also have it expedited. Obviously, that's gonna be a little bit of a larger charge, but uh, really beneficial for me to be able to get these things in my hands. So, like, in this envelope, what did I have? Something from the Secretary of State, probably something to do with my businesses. I think this is a new credit card. You gotta hack those miles. I just got a trip to Ireland, Budapest, and Paris for 60,000 miles and $100. If you're not travel hacking, 
you need to start hacking those miles. So I got about 10 envelopes here and I think this package cost me about $350 for them to send to me here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So as you can see, the online dashboards, um, specifically for traveling mailbox, uh, they're really kind of robust and there's a lot of things that you can do in here. So it's not just about managing just your mail. Um, you can also have checks cashed. You can send out checks. You can send a letter. You can send a postcard. You can send and receive faxes. There's a lot more things that you can do with these. And it's not just nomadic travelers like myself that are using these. A lot of folks use them for their businesses. This is kind of like having a virtual assistant for your mail. Uh, they kind of sort through it. They decide what's junk mail and get rid of that immediately. And then you're left with only the things that need your time. Well, now you can check that mail while you're sitting on the bus or you're sitting on the train or you're on your next flight and not have to wait until you get home or put a mail hold on, on your USPS mail every time you go out of town, you get home with a giant stack of mail. Um, you can kind of weed through those things the same way you do your email and your downtime or during that five or 10 minutes you're on the shitter in the morning. So obviously this is a service and it does cost some money. I use the cheapest tier that Traveling Mailbox has and what that gives me is 40 front envelope scans a month where they'll, they'll literally just scan the front of this envelope and I can pretty much tell, oh, well that's something that I need, that's something I don't need, I want you to hold that. I can decide a lot of things from just seeing the front of the envelope. And then it gives me 35 interior scans. So if I say, you know what, I don't want you to send this to me, but open it up and scan the inside of it. I can tell right now, this one has one page. So I have 35 page scans a month under my current plan. If I need to bump up, let's say I get a ton of mail, which I don't, um, and I need to bump up a plan, I can bump up and then I can bump right back down the next month if I'm you know, cutting back again. And there's a lot of add-ons that come to those plans, but, but that's the basics of what you really need. Obviously, the check cashing, the sending checks, sending a letter, postcards, things like that, um, it costs a little bit more. Um, it's usually a one-time fee. Now here's the kicker. This is not a solve-all for having an address. As a full-time digital nomad um, kind of world traveler, I still have to represent a physical address somewhere in the US. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty details, but essentially between the Patriot Act and real IDs and you know, kind of high profile security issues, the government in the United States is requiring that you represent that you live at a certain address. So essentially, if you're gonna get kind of a high profile banking account or a brokerage account, you're gonna get a real ID, which is gonna help with flying in 2020. You're gonna need a place where your vehicle says that it is insured to, and you're gonna to need to vote. So for that reason, you're probably gonna to have to choose a physical address. A lot of people in my situation, they just choose a relative's physical address in a state that makes sense for them. Boom, Bob's your uncle, I have both. They're never gonna get any of my mail because it's coming to my virtual mailbox, and now I can vote in that district. I can, you know, technically that's kind of where I live, but not really there very much. So there it is. That's how I get my mail. That's how I got my mail. I'm gonna read through this stuff and see what's been, what I've been missing for a month or so. Yeah, if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll see if I can answer those for you. But yeah, the bottom line is look through the services, see what's important to you. Um, see if location is important to you or, or, or cost, things like that. Totally dig my service, so I'll leave a link to that below. And I will link an article from the Nomad Experiment that I wrote with all the nitty gritty details about why you would or wouldn't choose a virtual mailbox, all the ins and outs, what they can do for you. All right, yeah, so do me a favor. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, share this with a friend. If you know somebody who's been thinking about traveling full time and they're trying to figure out the logistics, uh, send this to them and always appreciate it. And I will catch you on the flip side. Peace.